In a previous video covering MAME, I mentioned that PC, consoles, and handheld devices are called software lists. Setting up software lists require different steps than MAME ROMs, and there are also differences when setting up emulated PC hardware, so I wanted to create a separate video guiding you through this process. I'm not going to be going through the whole installation and basic settings, so if you need steps on that and more information about MAME, I'll provide my video on that in the comment section. Software lists require that you set up your game with a certain file structure. You first want to create a target folder with the name of the hardware, then you want to create a subfolder with the name of the game, and then you want to put your game into the subfolder. Software lists do not detect zip files, so you will have to extract the game into the folder using an application like WinRAR. I've added a link to the application in the comment section. MAME does have specific naming conventions for the hardware and in some cases the games as well. You can try doing a search for the specific hardware you want to use by going to the source file option located on the left panel. Here you can do a search for the hardware you're looking for. For this example, I want to run an Apple IIe game. Selecting the source will bring you back to the main screen where you will see a list of hardware show up in the middle panel. Double click on the hardware you want to use and this should show you a list of games. Now I have to locate the game I want to add. You can use the page down key to scroll through the list of games. Once I find the game I'm looking for, I just have to select it. The bottom area will give us the information we need to set up the game, so now I could use this information to create the file structure. First I'll create the system folder, then I'll create the subfolder with the game name. Finally I'll use WinRAR to extract the game into the subfolder. Now I just need to add the folder in MAME. Keep in mind that you may need to provide BIOS files. It does not have to go into the hardware folder, but without it, you will not be able to see the game in available. Once you add the folder, save your settings, select previous menu, and choose available in the left side panel. The Apple IIe hardware should now appear in the middle panel. Double click on it. This may take you to the unfiltered section on the left side panel. Just go back to available, and you should now see your game in the middle panel. Double click to start it up and see if it works. If it does not work, May may tell you what files are required to run the game. In the case of Apple IIe, there are several. The process for setting up PC games is different because the minute you run a PC game, it emulates the keyboard of the original hardware. For this game in particular, it has a two disc requirement, which means I'll need to go into settings to make changes. In order to do this, you have to select the scroll lock key on your keyboard. This unlocks the UI controls so that you can select the tab key to bring up the settings menu. From here, you want to select the file manager. Select floppy disk 2 and select flop 2. Once selected, this should bring you back to the file manager. Select return to previous menu, which will bring you back to the main settings menu and select close menu. Hit scroll lock to disable UI controls and you should be all set to continue running the game. Hopefully you now get the idea of how to use software lists. Hello folks, this is the core from the editing bay. And I basically are, I'm doing this for the first time because I ran into something that I did not get to put in the original script. And so I wanted to just go over that for you guys, because this is probably going to be something that you're going to run into. So basically when you're using the software list, there are going to be certain systems that are looking for a specific format when it comes to the file that you put into the game folder. It's not always going to tell you the exact specific format that you need in order to run the game. And so the best way to find out what this is, is actually going into the hash folder. So I'm going to go ahead and go into hash. And then you're going to look up the system that you want to use. So for this example, I was going to try and run a game 
using the Sega Master System. So what you want to do is you're going to scroll down and you're going to look for the Sega Master System file. And so what you want to do is right click over this and then click on the edit here. And then after you click on edit, then what you want to do is you want to look for the game that you want to run. Now you can do this quickly by just hitting control F and that will bring up the finder. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste the name of the game that I'm looking for. And then you're going to click find next. And what you'll find out here is that you have to name it like this. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. And so this has to be the name and this has to be the format for Sega Master System in particular. It's usually the SMS format that you'll see. But in this case, as you can see here, this is using the BIN format. And you can really just rename it to this. So you can just rename it .bin instead of .sms. And that should work. So that's all I wanted to really go over because I figured that you're going to run into this. So I just wanted to kind of let you know that you can use the hash file to look up the specific naming convention for the game that you're going to put into the folder. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. I wanted to do one more example of using software lists. For this example, I'm going to set up a game for the Sega SG-1000 console. Like before, I'm going to select the source file option in the left panel and search for the hardware. Once I've selected the hardware, I'm going to look for the game I want to set up. The game I'm using for this example is Argus. The same steps apply for creating the file structure. A folder for the system, a folder for the game, and extracting the game into the game folder using WinRAR. You may have to restart main for the system to pick up. This time around, an additional BIOS is not required and the system should show up in the available list. Double click the system name, go to available and you should see the game. If you're unable to find the name of your hardware using the method I showcased, I suggest using the MAME arcade database as it does provide the main naming conventions for PC, console and handheld hardware. Hopefully this guide has been useful in helping you set up software lists with MAME. If you found this information to be helpful, please remember to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel as I will be doing more setup guides in the future. For now, this is the core, your entertainment techie, signing out.